Jonathan Schroden, who is the Director of Countering Threats and Challenges Program at the CNA in the United States. Jonathan, welcome to the program. How concerned, even possibly alarmed, are you at what's been happening with the Taliban making these advances, significant ones, for a number of weeks now? Uh, it's very concerning. There's no question about that. I mean, it, it's not surprising in some ways that the Taliban have been making gains in rural areas of Afghanistan as the U.S. has withdrawn a lot of its support, you know, taking its thumb off the scale, if you will. I think a lot of us expected that the Taliban would make gains in rural areas that they had, uh, uh, you know, amassed a pretty sizable presence in over the last couple of years. What's been surprising and I think most concerning over the last few weeks is both the speed at which that's happened and also the fact that the Taliban have uh, seized a lot of these territories in the north, which are areas in which they didn't have a traditionally strong presence in the past. How does the advance and the territorial gain affect the negotiations, I'm not even sure to call it a peace process because it seems almost to have collapsed. How does it affect the negotiations between the Taliban and the government, which whatever scenario, you would imagine those talks have to happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still assess that the only way this war is going to end is through some type of negotiated settlement. So we do have to get back to the, those peace talks in Doha and re, you know, reinvigorate that peace track and the U.S. really needs to figure out what it can do to try and, you know, stimulate that to happen as well. But from the Taliban's perspective, they're unlikely to do much in the way of serious negotiating uh, in Doha or elsewhere until they have a chance now to test the Afghan security forces in the field without having the U.S., you know, provide lots of air support, lots of logistics support, the types of support that the U.S. has been providing for years that, as has become apparent in recent months, has really been, uh, you know, the backstop for Afghan security forces in the field. So until the Taliban get a chance to really test them and see how far they can get militarily, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of progress in Doha with the negotiations, unfortunately. Jonathan, uh, what I'm trying to get at is, do you think that these gains might mean the Taliban actually want to control the whole nation of Afghanistan? Do they want to sit at a table from a position of strength and say to the government, OK, we can do some sort of business, we'll uh, enter politics? Or might they say, because we've made these gains, we actually want some sort of agreement which allows us to keep control of these territories? I mean, we've been hearing over the past year or so, of uh, the territory that the Taliban is controlling in Afghanistan is very much almost like living when the Taliban was the government. In other words, people can't listen to Western music, girls can't go to school, all those sorts of uh, stories of oppression that we've heard, they're happening in Afghanistan right now. Yes, I, I don't dispute that at all. I think that's correct. There's been a lot of reporting to that effect that while the Taliban have changed in some regard, they are in many ways uh, very similar, if not the same, to they were when they were in charge of Afghanistan the last time. Uh, and to your, your first question, I would say I, I don't think there's any question that the Taliban, if they could, would like to take over the entirety of the country and be solely in charge. I don't think they have the military strength to do that unless the Afghan security forces completely collapse. And I think that's been the most concerning thing about the last month or so is that what we've seen is not the Taliban militarily overrunning uh, Afghan security force positions. For the most part, what we've seen is Afghan security force units running out of ammunition, running out of food, running out of supplies, because Kabul simply cannot sustain them in the field. And then those units are fleeing their positions or surrendering to the Taliban. So until Kabul can get its act together and support its forces in the field and really take a stand somewhere sometime against the Taliban in this push that they're making, I think you're going to see the Taliban continue to try and take over the country militarily until until the, the government shows that it can stop them from doing so. Jonathan, really appreciate the analysis. Thank you so much indeed. Jonathan Schroden there from the CNA.